Hi, Josh. Good to see you. I yep, was just same. watching one of your videos. The, the reason why I thought it would be good to talk with you, apart from just enjoying watching your videos and sort of agreeing with the, the way you were talking, was that I'm very interested in BSV. Now, the trial, I watched four hours of the trial uh, where uh, Craig Wright is prosecuting, trying to prosecute um, the Hodlinaut for slandering him about whether or not Craig Wright really is Natashi, Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, sure enough, I think it's, it's I think as you do that the trial will will rule that in fact uh, it was slander. It was not based on facts. He didn't check his stuff out. All he did was build a cult of meme followers and get lots of likes, and he was having fun. I agree with you there. I don't even hate the guy. I mean, he's just a young guy. He's having fun, and it's not serious to him. But he's dealing with Someone I've often compared this recently with a boat, a rowing boat full of pirates off Ethiopia, taking on the U.S. General Ford aircraft carrier. You know that that's kind of the balance of the power. Hodler Nort is a young guy without a lot of experience. He's certainly not a serious guy, and I I noted with some approval your talk about serious things. Now I don't think Hodler Nort is a serious guy, but the world has got some very serious things going on going on at the moment. If Hodlinot had to be in the Ukrainian army right now, all of a sudden the world would become very serious. Things would matter. Truth particularly would matter. Whether or not there's five tanks over there isn't just an opinion. It's whether they or not matters. So back to cryptocurrency. I wanted to uh, I wanted to investigate whether BSV is the next big riser I did well in 2017. I've been involved with cryptocurrency since about 2014 when I read an article by a guy, Peter Diamandis, who runs an outfit called Abundance Digital. You pay $1,000 and you can be in that for a year. It's all about advancing digital technologies. Anyway, I read an article about Bitcoin then, and Bitcoin was about $200 US in those days. I thought, that really makes sense. And I bought a a little stash of them and it crashed right after that and so well it's still a good idea but i stayed with them and now you know that they're twenty thousand dollars each us so i'm quite happy with that and it was a an experience that that was a good experience but a, a better experience was when in 2017 i read an article i was all keeping an eye out on all these digital technologies and i saw an article that said that morgan chase were collaborating with Microsoft and they were using, going to use, they were about to use Ethereum in their back rooms to revolutionize the way they operated. Now to me, as I am very interested in functionality, just like you were talking in your videos, not just opinion about whether they're good to speculate on, but whether they actually achieve something, whether it's an agricultural product like you were talking about, whether it actually does something, never mind sentiment about it, whether it actually performs a function. I call that functionality. And I saw there that the functionality was going to perhaps revolutionize two big corporations, a bank and a big IT company. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was under, put my hair on end, and I checked out to see what Ethereum's price was doing. And it was a hockey stick rising. And to cut a long story short, I grabbed my bag ran down to Wellington, did business down there, bought every bit of Ethereum that I could afford. And then within three weeks, it had skyrocketed. And I was never the same after that. When you have a success like that, even if it was very risky, you're never the same. There's this nagging feeling most people have, oh, I'm not the type, it could never happen to me. It did. It can happen to you. You just have to have the right attitude. Like you have got a good attitude. You are inquiring. You are not just looking at sentiment. You're examining truthfully. You're looking at the hard facts, the unpleasant facts, as well as the happy-go-lucky, cheeky, fun ones. You're looking at the truth. That will make you, that will serve you very well if you continue. Anyway, back to BSV. Having experienced the Ethereum, the Bitcoin rise, but more the Ethereum rise, that really was quite funny. That's Ethereum because... Craig right now is knocking Ethereum. You can imagine how I feel about that, my treasure, little Ethereum. But anyway, uh, you know, that was then. This is now kind of thing. That's where my loyalty is. That was then. This is now. Uh, so I'm now looking at BSV in the same way that I looked at 
Ethereum. And uh, I'm curious to see, there's one thing that haunts me. I have actually, recently, like in the last week or two, put a bit of money into BSV, just to be careful, just in case it skyrockets. I didn't buy a lot, but I bought enough so that I wouldn't kick myself if I hadn't done it. But m the bulk of the, my idea of investing it will wait until I've confirmed one or two things. Now, one thing that I wanted to ask you about was that Craig Wright, who I think is Satoshi Nakamoto, not only because of the watching four hours of the the trial between him suing Odenort for slander, saying he's not Satoshi Nakamoto, but also in a previous one hour video on YouTube that's called Why I Believe Sat uh, That Craig Wright is Satoshi Nakamoto. I watched that carefully. Anyway, I had saw seen those things, but I, but during the during that first one, where, why I think uh, Craig Wright is Satoshi Nakamoto. Craig Wright, who I highly respect technically, said that BSV would never uh, be suitable for speculators. He's, he said it's been made so that it won't rise the way other coins have. Now, that scares me off because if I'm going to support an investment and I'm going to take risk on it, I expect to be paid handsomely if my risk is great and my persistence is loyal for a long time based on the functionality and truth, then I expect to get reward. Now, I did get reward for Ethereum, but um, but now we're looking at BSV, and I think it shoots uh, down ETH and possibly the other cryptocurrencies. But anyway, if Craig Wright says that it won't, it will not be able uh, su suitable for speculators, then you can call me a speculator or invest whatever you like. But that means he's saying that it won't skyrocket. Now that puts me off. I want to know why he said that. Do you know? So if if I were to guess, I don't know the context of how he said it, but he may be comparing it to the current crypto commodity or crypto fluctuation, meaning like he's you, you just talked about how BTC has is the most return has the highest returns in human history, or if the ETH went from you know. I think in 2015 it was cents, and then in 2017 it went up to $1,300 or whatever. He may be referencing that specifically and may be saying, okay, well, it's going to be speculative like a commodity or something on the stock exchange where, you know, 4% move is a big move, something like that. That may be what he's saying, but in my opinion, that contradicts, one, the last 14 years, and two, um, his own statements. Um, so the truth is PTC has appreciated greatly. Ethereum has done these things. These coins have done this. Even BSV has gone from 50 to 500 within a matter of months. That's happened twice now. So it, the, the reality contradicts that statement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other part, the other part is he predicted that BSV would go to price in 12 to 1200 in 2019. Hang on. Which what, is wrong what, about. what say that again? In 2019, he predicted that the price of BSV would go to 1200 by the end of the year. Okay. That's interesting. Because what I'm afraid of, before I walk out on this ice, like you lived in, in Canada for 14 years, so uh, I'm very careful about serious things. Before I invest significantly into BSV, I want to know that it that the statement that it would not be suitable for speculators, or you can call me a speculator if you like, is not true. And what I'm most concerned about is whether there is a technical reason, not just a market reason, but a technical reason where it could have a mechanism inside it that prevented it going that way. But that flies in the face of the fact that there's a limited supply of BSV. Now, clarify for me. I, I'm not sure whether I know that Bitcoin, BTC, is limited to 21 million coins and therefore when de if and when demand increases, then that price goes up because you, people have to compete to spend on it to be able to use it. Now, what right. about BSV? What do you think? Yes, it also has fixed supply of 21 million, the same okay. as BTC. Okay, so are we? Ex so they can't mint it. They can't just mint it easily. Right. And uh, so that means that if demand for BSV increases, then the price has got to go up. 
that's, mm. that's supply and demand. All right. Now, another thing I'll confirm with you, I think you've referred to it, and actually I've just confirmed before this uh, web discussion, I checked out something very important. Whether or not it is policeable. Now, that's a horrible word for a lot of people in the cryptocurrency fraternity. People love their freedom, and so do I. But I had a good daddy, and my father taught me authority can be valuable. It keeps the community safe, and obviously we need some privacy. But we don't want the kind of privacy that enables people to easily do drug deals, traffic in children, um, you know, money laundering, all that sort of thing. So if the people who run this world, that's the governments, believe it or not, if they think that a cryptocurrency is policeable on warrant, that is, they can't just walk into your house. They have to have a warrant from a judge, from the Department of Justice, before they can go near your computer or ask you anything. But the cryptocurrency that will survive regulation will have to be, I think, one that is warrant, able to be investigated with a warrant, a proper warrant, open to the public, scrutiny, the media, everything like that, so that crime can be investigated. Now, the, the Lightning Network, which uh, Craig Wright has knocked and criticized, hang on, just doing that. Um, uh, it, he says it will not scale, and part of the reason is that it destroys records of previous transactions. Now, the Interpol and the DOJ and the Justice Department of New Zealand Ministry of Justice, they won't like that. And I understand you don't have to use the Lightning Network. You can just use BSV. And apparently it gets faster the more traffic it has. Now, that's great. That's scalability. It uses about, uh, I, I saw one phrase, orders of 10 less energy than Bitcoin. Now, all that oh, yeah, is, right. all that, if it's true, is wonderful uh, for the future of BSV. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know, can you tell me, I'll, I'll just be quiet now and let you talk. What do you think is, if all this is true, and if BSV is better, it's scalable, it's fast, the transactions are cheap, and the police can check it if they have to with a warrant. What happens to B BTC itself? Yeah. Does so, it re does it remain as a store of value, or what? What is it? What happened? What's your thoughts? Yeah, this is just my biased opinion, but it was when I first got into crypto early uh, in um, 2018. Um, I I got into BTC, and you know I just accepted the narratives, but. As, as the time went on, the first like eight months or so of that year went on, I started asking questions, you know, about, OK, why why do the blocks need to be small? Why can't it scale, et cetera? And it was actually reading the Lightning Network white paper that made me sell BTC to BCH at the time. OK, it, I was convinced that it would not work okay. at, at back in. Yeah, it was summer of 2018. Um, I read the paper and it was just frankly, it was garbage. It was okay. just. I have a payments background. I knew it wasn't going to work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, in my opinion, because BSV and BTC at its core are basically the same, they're from the same Genesis block. They've just, you know, they've changed the protocols, right? If one scales, there's no reason for the other to exist. When they're the same, BSV today is superior to BTC in every single way. Okay. So, so you like, reckon, you do you think the BTC will fade away? Yes. Okay. Yes. Th that's reasonable. Uh, now, now, without unforeseen crazy circumstances, Hang on. it will happen. Sorry, naturally. I'm on a call. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, without any unforeseen weirdness, if if the current path that those two chains are going on continues, when the subsidy of coins runs out, which you know there's halvings every four years. Yep. There's no one's gonna mind BTC because there's no reason to do it the only reason people mine it is because there's a six coin subsidy every 10 minutes that's what twelve thousand dollars but if that goes away the system is designed to where transaction fees must replace that and bsv that's starting to happen is still not close to the subsidy but on btc i mean they explicitly don't want transactions they limit it to one megabyte 
per day, which is nothing. I mean, to, per block, which is nothing. So if the path continues, there'll be no incentive to mine BTC and it'll just die. The so price will the price will go to zero and the chain will cease to exist. Well, will the B, will BSV mining continue? If there's transaction volume to justify it. All right, okay. okay. Continuing. So so BSV gets faster with traffic and there's, therefore there's more mining to be done. So there's pay in the pockets of the miners. I have yeah. two cryptocurrency rigs, and right now they're sulking in the corner. <laughs> and uh, to, you, you made the point about the energy. Yeah. Well, what, that's kind of a misnomer currently because the only reason that BSV uses less en energy is because its price is one four hundredth of a BTC. So if BSV's price were to go to 20K, it would use just as much energy as BTC. However, as those transactions replace, you won't have to do that crazy hashing. It's a, it becomes now about who has the most transactions in a block, and that's how you get paid. And that doesn't require the crazy amounts of energy. Okay. Now, another thing to keep in mind, I'm involved with all these singul so-called singularity technologies, AI, VR, 3D printing, autonomous vehicles, FTOLs, all that stuff. Part of that picture is we can expect that energy will get cheaper and we can expect that chips will get faster. Mm. So I think the energy problem will go away. Maybe it'll take five years or 10 years, but it's all happening exponentially fast. Right. So I'm wondering whether the problem of energy facing uh, BSB will go away. Even I now, so. it's, it's, even now it's better than BTC. So it can, I don't think that, DSV can collide with the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, or the Department of Justice or Department of Internal Affairs here in New Zealand. It can't collide the way that Bitcoin has. Uh, therefore, that's another green light for BSV. Right. So right now, so far in our conversation, we have confirmed that we sort of agree that BSV is scalable, going to be faster, it's going to be cheaper, still going to be mineable. Um, by the way, uh, could you just off the cuff tell me whether I will be able to get my rigs going again? Because they were doing fine with Ethereum, but then Ethereum went to proof of stake. Right. So just, they're just dead now. They're earning a dollar a day. Um, but do you happen to know whether I could be mining BSV and making money on it? Or has it got to wait for that? Um you could um it just depends on the invest the level of investment and risk you're willing to take but i think there's room for profit there for sure but, okay so i'm, uh, I'm in, the investment's already been made they're sitting there there's twenty thousand dollars worth of crypto rig a mining rig there keeping the place warm that's all okay um uh so anyway i will look around i've got a buddy he actually set it up for me and i'll look into that I don't yeah. mind because I'll, I'll keep them here because I'm next week. I expect to extend the solar array on my roof so that I'll be grid independent. So I can, without any guilt, mine to my heart's content. You know, so I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> anyway, so it's looking good. One other thing I wanted to say, I think in one of your videos, you were talking about um, functionality of BSV and the other coins. And I think you were provocatively to get to get likes and to get hits. You were saying that they'll all go to nothing and that BSP will go to $5. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now I, I have to disagree with you about the other coins. Take, for example, IOTA, Internet of Things, that coin there. That's not just a Dogecoin. That is a functional setup, a technological setup that enables micropayments and a grand scale between, it's like the Java of devices. It connects everything with everything for micropayments very efficiently. Now that's different from BSV. BSV is a sort of a cryptocurrency. And I think that BSV does, by the way, of course, have the ability to do distributed apps, dApps. So I'm not sure, maybe you're right, maybe that it's possible that BSV could do everything that IOTA does or 
library and all the others. Maybe you can do all of those things in BSV. I'm doubtful, but it's maybe that's true. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Do you think that BSV has got such universal versatility that it will be do, able to do any DAP, any distributed application, finance, whatever it is, that would be done by the other specialized one? Will it, will it in fact, kill Sol- Solana, Avalanche, Iota, you know, will it, will it wipe them all out? Do you, you seem to suppose that it will. I, I do in the long term. I don't know how long that's going to take because I do believe it can replace the functionality that those are trying to do because this whole space started with a limited BT Bitcoin. Yeah. It, it was never everything that was useful was taken out of it for seven years. Yeah. Right. So every other chain, all these guys who have made these different coins are under an incorrect assumption. So whenever they make something, they're trying to solve a specific thing, right? A very niche thing like global state with Ethereum, for example, Okay. which has proven to not scale. I mean, at this point, I think it's, it's proven that it doesn't work. Solana is the same thing. It breaks. It's broken 10 times now, which in payments is unacceptable, right? I mean, no one ever goes to the, to swipe their credit card and it says, please try again. That never happens later because of some arbitrary network thing, okay. right? Yeah. Um, I know IOTA has broken several times. Um, so these guys have all... Now, with that said, where I'm open to... The way I see I could be wrong is the reason Ethereum is the number two is because of this whole chase after a global state, this ability to do smart contracts, the dApps, as you mentioned. I I could see chain, a chain or chains staying around for a while that do that sort of thing because Bitcoin does not do that stuff, but that is the reason that it scales. So it's one of those things where, okay, you, we can try this thing that's in the long term dead, short term, maybe we generate some noise, but in the end, we're going to lose anyway. That That's how I see it. So, and I think that's what's playing out, right? That's why ETH, Solana, you got some of these other VC funded coins coming out that are generating lots of hype. I expect that to continue, but in the long run, it, it'll, once that fee drops to be so low, it's, I think it's game over. Because you know, you know what, you, you know what you want to do, or both of us want to do is <laughs> arrange a webinar. If the, the participants are willing, where you get the head of Avalanche and the head of Solana in a room with us. And we ask them the question, and Craig writes there as well. That's what we want. We want to know the technicalities of it without anyone getting too excited, moderating it so that people are reasonable rather than cult sensational, and see how they fare. Now, like this is like gunfight at OK Corral. Do you remember that movie? You can you can imagine. I mean, that's what it would be. I've been, I actually instigated a thing like that in Montreal a long, long time ago, <laughs> and it was spectacular. And and the winner won, so shall we say, a, a, a $620 million municipal incinerator in Montreal was cancelled wow. despite 100, you know, like millions in claims for a breach of contract because a bunch of councillors got together and mobilised against it. I rang up one of them. And I said, can I organize? She said, don't worry, I'll do it, I'll do it. But anyway, what I'm saying is, here, you and I have fleshed out the main factors, scalability, price, transactions, all that. But the question hanging in the air is, really, can the others compete? And if uh, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is in the room, let's hear what he has to say with those. Maybe it's too complicated, but that's the... One way or another, that's what we want, isn't it? Well, you know? I think so, but I think those guys would never agree to do it. Well, just, hang on, hang on. He's a fraud and well, hang on, hang on, hang on. The reason why those councillors got together was because it was in their interest. The municipal incinerator was in their interest. They didn't, but they didn't do it because I said so. They did it because they wanted to. I knew they would. I rang one of them. She said, "Leave it to me," and they organised it. Similarly, 
if you said Craig Wright is going to be talking to anyone who reckons that BSV can't compete with Solana or Avalanche or whatever, maybe you could do them one by one. I'm just thinking it would be a dream to have five of them in the room. Just imagine what the market would do after that. We have now was watched. It's a showdown. Honestly, I think they know that we are right, and that's why they won't do it. Well, okay, all right. Remember. All right, hang on. The politics of this is then, if they won't, you can say they won't. Yeah. If they will, fine. Let let's meet at dawn. Let's meet at noon. Yeah. Uh, Craig, Craig, right now, I, I'm I'm not so sure. I'm not as sure as you are that they would feel that they're actually the loser and they're not going to actually succeed. I think they're very confident in their product. Oh, yeah. I, I think they think it can. So that would increase their willingness to be in confrontation with Craig Wright. So if they wouldn't, you can say they wouldn't. You can say this on your channel. You can say that to the whole world. We rang this guy. We kind that guy. They did reply. They said they wouldn't because A, B, or C. Now, we find out what the A, B, C is. Or, lo and behold, one of them says, yeah, I'm the CEO there. I'm the technical, I'll have my technical guru right beside me. And we will talk you, Joshua. We will talk with you 10, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, if you like. So that's the kind of stuff. Now, you imagine what that would do to your ratings. I'm not going to do it. But I'd be, if you want me in on it, fine. But this, this is a showdown that needs to be had. Because at the moment, the parties involved are not directly talking to each other the way you and I are straightening out things right now. It would be a service to the whole world if there could be clarity on this issue. Yeah, I agree. We're just about out, out of time. We've got two minutes. Is, do you want to continue after this in another session or do you want to finish now? Yeah, we can finish up. Um, I, I agree with you. I think that would be great. I just, I'm not I'm very skeptical of those guys. Like they would, yeah, I, I think it's it's worth trying it though. I just think it would play out a lot like we saw when Vitalik basically said that Craig Wright shouldn't even be allowed at this conference. Yeah, okay, okay. But, but what I'm saying is you can talk quietly with the guys who are determined and vehement about their product. You say, I'm going to give you a chance to shoot Craig Wright to pieces. It's going to be on my show. It won't be live. You can edit. We'll edit anything you don't like after. Just like mm -hmm. I set up this little thing. Say, I'm, I've am i got a following here. You can make Solana look great right there with Craig, uh, Craig Wright. You know, anyway, consider it. Because don't think that they won't because that just it's too good to be true. It could be in their interest. If they think they could shoot him down in flames or even partly do that, it's still mm -hmm. a valuable thing. And it's good for the whole community. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, I enjoyed the discussion. Thank you. I, I have clarified a few things. I'm more confident about investing in BSV, and I make make a few changes to my, the amount I have of BSV for now. <laughs> okay, great.